Well, it's a great streak to have. Uh, that's one that uh, any quarterback, any quarterback would be proud to have. And uh, a lot goes into that. Um, talent, taking care of the ball, knowing, uh, knowing where everybody is on the field, knowing, knowing defenses, and uh, yeah, that's, a, that's a heck of a streak. I'd like to keep that, go, that, that one going. No, not superstitious. In fact, uh, we're superstitious about not being superstitious. <laughs> as far as taking care of the ball, though, that's uh, and ball security, and uh, how that relates to uh, your team being successful. We're very serious about that. Commitment to to, uh, to taking care of the ball. Um, Tom Rathman uh, does talk about it daily, uh, and coaches it daily, and does a fabulous job. Uh, boy, as good a job as uh, any of us have ever seen done in that regard. Uh, and I think that uh, you know the men that are handling the ball, and Tom Rathman, uh, all deserve a lot of credit there. Again, so streak we'd like to keep going. On the flip side of that, Jim, obviously the defense is getting turnovers in big ways. That's why you guys win the turnover margin. Bowman gets that interception uh, against Green Bay. And we've seen them form up these practices, getting balls thrown to them. And, and that's just something that you guys work on every single day uh, since you've started the offseason program? In some form or fashion, yes. Yes. We, we see uh, Pete Hansen throwing them the, the ball every day. He can wing it really, really, really well. Do you think that that you know, is, is nice for developing their hands you know, against a, a guy like Aaron Rodgers? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It is. Uh, yeah, he, he might be the tallest coach in all of football. Uh, speaking of tall guys, uh, Calvin Johnson presents a, obviously a, a big challenge for you guys. In terms of the defensive uh, game plan, now revealing I think, what do you see in Calvin Johnson? Is that where is that where it starts when you prepare for the line? That's one of the places that. Um, you know, it starts. I mean, there's a lot of tremendous football players on their team. Uh, I think all the superlatives that have been associated with Calvin Johnson as a football player are accurate. Um, he is a proven uh, football player. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to do a great job defending him. Some, yes. No, it's a, it's it's early to elaborate on that, uh, but yes, we're noticing some some differences, some uh, some adjustments. Yes. Carlos Rogers yesterday uh, really praised the, the scout team for how they prepare the defense. Mm -hmm. um, he said that even Michael Thomas was playing a little bit of, of wide receiver last week. Mm -hmm. Yes, but the, the, I mean, the single greatest factor in composing the developmental squad is, uh, is that they're players that we feel we can uh, develop, you know, future starters on future championship teams. That's, uh, that's how we approach it first and foremost and, and, and definitely expect and, uh, you know, that those guys are going to be uh, ex excellent in practice as well. And uh, they did a great job last week. Uh, I think it was somewhat of a shock for them um, <clears throat> having to play uh, two positions at times, receiver and 
and defensive back in Nate Palmer's case, uh, Al Netter playing in the offensive line and the defensive line, uh, Mike Thomas playing receiver, uh, Michael James did an outstanding job as a running back and a receiver. Uh, you know, AJ Jenkins runs a go route and, you know, hey, hustle back, you got another one, you know. Um, a little different than it was for training camp for uh, those men, but they did a great job. I think that's where it all starts. I really do. Uh, you know, any three and out that you get in the game, I believe, is, uh, you know, first starts on the practice field with the guys that are uh, demonstrating the opponent's offense or uh, any big play that you get on offense. It first starts with the, uh, the men that are demonstrating the defense, uh, similar in all kicking situations. Uh, it all starts there. You know, those returns or those, those downs inside the uh, 10 or the 20, uh, you know, really starts from that great, great look. Uh, so I was really pleased after, after one week with our guys on the developmental squad. And, and they were good on the sideline, too, in Green Bay. Uh, there was times to look back there and saw guys shading guys, you know, with, uh, with the towel. Uh, Tony Gerard Eddy at one point, you know, had six cups of uh, water and Gatorade in his hand and he was dispensing it out to the guys. Uh, just that whatever you can do mentality uh, showed up there on the sidelines in Lambeau Field. I thought uh, that bodes well for us, got the right guys. Yes, uh, developmental squad. Developmental squad, you mean? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Offense was Garrett Sellett, special teams was uh, Nathan Palmer, and defensively was uh, Cam Johnson. Jim, why do you like to help Because that's, we're developing future starters on future championship teams. A lot of teams sort of rotate that developmental squad and give guys a tryout basically a week at a time. Uh, I mean, there's not going to rule that out, but uh, that's something that we have done sparingly. Jim, your uh, running back for your posse is pretty deep. Frank Moore, is it likely that he will continue to be getting 12 to 15 carries a game? Would you have a target number if Brent Jacobs comes back? How, how does that influence uh, your decision making where it doesn't at all? The possibilities um, are, are are that you know they're they're possibilities, and we could we could uh, do whatever that the team feels it needs to do to to win the ball game, win the next game. That's the single most important thing. Do you have a, a target number of carries for runners that go into a game? Is that something that falls as the game unfolds for you, for Frank Moore and others? Yeah, that that can vary. That can vary going into a game. There could be a target number, or there. Uh, uh, but you always like to leave the possibility out there that that uh, you know anything can happen. What that How do you react, react to the emergency? Maybe catch down there without your touchdown. As a coach, seeing that, I mean, is it waiting, wanting a guy to be able to celebrate a nice play and also being a little bit cautious? In terms of uh, injuring himself, or or what do you where you? There's a couple of different thoughts of school on that one. Uh, I like uh, me personally, the celebrating all wins, all uh, in their own personality is, is uh, the way I think about it. Well, just because you say that doesn't mean that that's what that we think. That's not the way uh, we think. Uh, you know, we the, the team. That's 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 your words. Uh, you know, for us, it's just our, it's our team, and um, you know, we believe in in hard work and preparation is the thing that puts us in the best position to be successful on uh, on Sunday. And the next game is the single most fundamental uh, factor 
that we need to get done is, uh, is to win that game. Secondly, you'd like to improve as a team. Uh, every guy, uh, you'd like to come out of this week being better than, than uh, what they were when they went in. Uh, and as a team, you want to come out as a better ball club uh, when you come out than when you went in. Uh, those, are, uh, those are two things that you'd like to get done uh, this week and, and winning the game being the, the single most important factor. <clears throat> Um, I thought he played uh, extremely well in this in this ball game, uh, and that, that I think that was apparent to everybody. Uh, I guess your question specifically is, did he play mentally faster? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't totally. You know, I'm not in his head. Uh, he just played really well, and uh, you know, he, we get behind Alex and we go. That's what we do. You know, that's uh, we got. Complete faith in him uh, in all those regards, mentally, physically, etc. It was a, it was a good, hard-fought uh, football game, like you know all these <laughs> all these games are. Uh, you never never know what the percentage will be this year, but uh, it just. Seems every every single week. I mean, it's coming down to the last possession, in some form or fashion. Either you're trying to score to go ahead or tie the game, um, or you're trying to defend somebody that's trying to go ahead or, or tie the game. Uh, you know, is it 80 percent, 85 percent? Maybe this year it'll even be 90 percent of the games. Uh, uh, just seem to come down that way. That's how competitive this league is. Couple more, please. We do, yes. Um, no, we don't really share the grades, you know, outside of. Uh, you don't need to tell me who, but did, did anybody get a perfect grade? We don't, we don't, we don't share that information. That's for the players well, and the coaches. Grade, then how, how <laughs> uh, well, we went over this the other day. Uh, you know, we we. We we were not perfect. We uh, we. <laughs> yes. Per day, per week. Whichever. Yeah, he's getting reps. Um, I don't know the exact number of reps that he's getting per day or per week. But he is uh, he is practicing it. We came in yesterday. Uh, we came in yesterday. We saw Vernon Davis and Dallas with the Justin Sheen catching passes. How many how many passes did he kept per day and per week? You gonna? Well, you know that. That'd be, that'd be great. But I mean, are you looking at the fact that he comes in? I mean, he seems to be always working on that machine. Yeah. He's been in the league since 2006 now. Yeah. Made his mark, and, he, and he's still working that hard. Yeah. yeah. That we know Vernon, and we know uh, what Vernon, what makes Vernon tick, what his goals are, what his uh, his his ambitions are, his dreams are, and uh, and uh, when you know that, it doesn't surprise you that he's out there <clears throat> every day uh, trying to get better and trying to improve.